श्री गुरुभ्यो नम वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन टीचिंग एकेडमी एक हलैवा क्लास नाइन सोशल साइंस सो फॉर वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोरल पॉलिटिक्स फ्रॉम आवर सिविक्स बुक एंड इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ इलेक्शन एंड व्हाट मेक्स एन इलेक्शन डेमोक्रेटिक एंड ऑल्सो वी डिस्कस अबाउट द पोलिटिकल कॉम्पिटिशन वेदर इट इज गुड और बैड इन अ डेमोक्रेसी and now we are going to step into our new concept that is today we are going to learn so today we are going to see uh, the topics such as what is our system of election and about electoral constituencies and also about reserved constituencies and the voters list shall we go to the lesson yes Okay, now what is our uh, system of election? So, what is our system of election, children? So, if you uh, uh, look at uh, how elections are held in India, you will come to know very clearly about the system of election. And generally, you, you people know that we have three levels of government in India, and one is for the entire country, that is union government, and for the state level, we have state government, and the third level, we have the local self uh, government right so the elections are uh, conducted on the whole whole country it is called as general election okay the elections are conducted for the whole country it is called as general election and uh, at the state level we have the state uh, the state assembly election at the central level we have the lok sabha election or we can term it as a parliamentary election okay so the lok sabha election and the vidhan sabha elections are held after every 5 years okay and uh, we have two uh, houses in the parliament right so what are they they are lok sabha and rajya sabha so the lok sabha elections are uh, held every 5 years once but what about rajya sabha children the rajya sabha uh, members are elected indirectly by the elect uh, by the electoral college who are the people who will be there in the electoral college the members of the state legislative council the state legislative assembly and the municipal members and the zilla parishad member all these people will contribute to select the rajya sabha members and of course uh, one third of people uh, in rajya sabha they will get retirement after every two years and uh, it cannot be dissolved by anybody and that is why the rajya sabha is also called as permanent house whereas the lok sabha and vidhan sabha uh, the elections are held after every 5 years or after the 5 years the terms of all the elected representative will, will come to an end okay and the vidhan sabha and uh, uh, the lok sabha stands uh, dissolved and then okay and then the representative will uh, complete the election newly okay so we are going to see about the system of election and it is categorized into two one is general election and another one is by election so we are going to see that so what is this general election so general election means elections are held in all the constituency at the same time on the same day or within a few day it is called as general election so general election means the elections are held in all the constituency at the same time same day or within a few day it is called as general election and now what is by election by elections means elections are held only one constituency the elections is held election is held only for one constituency to fill the vacancy caused by death or resignation of the candidate of the member is called by election for this i can say the example like uh, yeah, uh, the chief minister of tamil nadu four years back uh, the chief minister of tamil nadu ms jayalalitha has passed away right you people all know that and at that point of time he was uh, she was a representative of rk nagar isn't it so due to her death there was a vacancy in the rk nagar so to fill the vacancy the election commission conducted the election for that particular constituency alone and that is called as by election so what is by election children election is held only for one constituency uh, to fill the vacancy caused by death or resignation is called as by election 
and now we are going to uh, step into the uh, different stages of election. The first stage is called as splitting up of constituencies. Okay, so we are going to learn about the electoral constituencies. So in India, we follow a, an area-based representation. So to conduct the election, the whole country is divided into small, small uh, segments, small areas, and that small area is called as electoral constituencies. Right. So what is this electoral constituency? To conduct the election, for conducting the election purpose, the whole country is divided into a small, small area. That area is said to be a electoral constituency. So, for the Lok Sabha elections, for the Lok Sabha election, the country is divided into 543 constituencies, and the representative from each constituency is called as Member of Parliament, or we can call as MP okay and for for the state uh, again the state uh, to conduct the state assembly election the state is divided into a number of uh, state assembly constituencies and the elected representatives is called as the member of legislative assembly or the MLA okay so the same way we have the municipal and panchayat election okay so the each village and each town is divided into several wards and that ward it's uh, so this ward this wards you no know, these are like the constituencies right so for holding the municipal and panchayat election each village or each town is divided into small small ward this ward is like a constituencies okay so sometimes these constituencies are or constituted uh, uh, or sorry or counted as a seats so this constituencies are counted as seats seats because each constituency represent one seat in the assembly so for example uh, in the earlier part we have learned that the lokdal 160 seats in the haryana state assembly so that means the 60 seats uh, the Lokdal 160 assembly constituency. So, the constituency we can term this as a seats also. And now we are going to uh, see about the reserved constituency first. So, uh, just now we learnt about the constituency. So, constituency means the whole country is divided into small areas to hold the election that is called as constituency. But what is this reserved constituency? Some constituency are reserved for the people to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Okay, to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. So, in SC reserved constituency, only someone who belongs to the SC can stand for election. And the same wise, the ST reserved constituency, the people who belongs to scheduled tribe can stand in election in that constituency. And at present in Lok Sabha election, we have uh, 84 seats uh, for the scheduled caste and 47 seats for scheduled tribe. And also, so in this reservation system, uh, this reservation system has been extended to uh, some of the uh, backward uh, communities too. Okay, so in many states, the seats in local body elections are reserved for the other backward uh, caste people, that is OBC as well. And then the one third of seats are reserved for the women category. Okay, so one third of seats are reserved for the women category in the rural and urban body election. And now we are going to see why do we need reserved constituency. Why do we need reserved constituency children? Because uh, in India we have the, uh, what is that, a very uh, backward community people also there in India. Okay, So to uh, bring up uh, uh, their lifestyle or to take part uh, them in the uh, political body, the reserve seats have been facilitated. So our constitution makers worried about that the open and in open and electoral competition, certain weaker sections may not get chance to get elected in the Lok Sabha elections or the uh, state assembly election because these weaker sections, no, they may not have the sufficient resource, sufficient money or sufficient contact to get uh, uh, to win against other people. Okay, so that is why 
For weaker sections, uh, our constitution makers opted this reservation constituencies. And now we are going to learn about the voters list. Okay. So after the splitting up of constituencies, the next step of election is to preparing the voters list. Okay. So now we are going to step in to look at the voters list. Okay, and of course, it is a foremost and important uh, uh, step for the democratic uh, uh, country. Okay, so everyone should be able to choose, isn't it? So everyone should be able to choose. It is a foremost principle of the democratic feature. So in an every democratic election, in a democratic election, the list of those who are eligible to vote is prepared much before the election and given to them. So, the people who are eligible to cast their vote, that list will be ready even before the election starts and given to them. Okay. And this, is a, this list is officially called electoral roll or it is also known as the voters list. And this is an important step. It is linked with the democratic feature of our uh, democratic feature of any country. So, everyone should get equal opportunities to choose their representatives without any uh, discrimination. So, irrespective of their background, religion, gender, sex. So, irrespective of all these things, every adults have uh, the equal voting right. Okay, That is what we called as universal adult franchise. And now how the OTA list is being prepared. So, okay. Now we are going to learn about the preparation of the OTA's list. Okay. So the new person who, who are attaining the age of 18, their names are added in the OTA's list. And names of those who moved out of the place are uh, who are who are dead, their names will be deleted in that list. So this is how the OTA list will be prepared. So the person who are attaining the uh, age of 18 newly, their name will be added and the person who are moved out of the place or uh, the person who are dead, the, those names will be deleted from this list. Okay. So, this is how the OTAR list uh, is being uh, revised. Okay. So, the complete revision of the OTAR list will take place uh, uh, every five years. Okay. And now, um, so during an election day, the people who are eligible to cast their vote, they can uh, uh, take a election photo identity card with them and they, and they can go to the nearby polling booth and then they cast their vote. Okay, so we are going to see about the, what is this election photo identity card. Okay, so the election commission, that is the government has tried to, uh, has tried to provide the EPIC uh, to every person name who are there on the voters list. Okay, So, during an election day, the people can carry this card and go out to cast their vote in the nearby polling booth and then uh, by, uh, but this card is not yet compulsory for casting their vote nowadays because uh, the, the voters can give any other uh, uh, proof of identity like a smart card we have now and Aadhaar card we are having. So, we can give any other uh, proof of identity and we can uh, cast our vote. So, uh, this is what uh, about the today's class children. So, today we have learnt about uh, what is our system of election and we learnt about the general election and by-election and also you have learnt about the electoral constituencies, reserved constituency and why do we need reserved constituencies and at last we learnt about the preparation of voter list. So, thank you children. To receive our online lessons, subscribe our channel and you will get the latest notifications. Thank you children.